Eyes, on his eyebrows from a little brown bottle of liquid called New Skin. That was the label on it. It turned out to be a plastic solution that was designed to protect those eyes which cut so readily. Meantime, when apprised of the situation, the officials forced the handlers to comb that solution out of the eyebrows. Thus the delay in Galindez getting into the ring. But he is superbly trained for this fight, as he said. And so is Rossman, though Rossman did not look as good in his sparring sessions, in point of fact, as Galindez did. Both weighed in at 174 and an eighth pounds. Rossman with a big age in years. He's 22, Galindez is 30. We'll get to the rules and the fight itself and we come back to the Superdome in a moment. Once again, back with the live scene, the public address announcer introducing Victor Galindez. You see the tale of the tape. The big edge in age that Rossman enjoys. Galindez will be 31 in November. But the edge in upper body strength clearly goes to Victor Galindez. And he will try to use that in mauling his opponent on the inside. An old tactic of his and an old tactic of Carlos Monzon, his fellow countryman, the former great middleweight champion. Mike Rossman, a devastating puncher with either hand. And the rules today, the 10-point must system in scoring. Scoring done by two judges and the referee. The three-knockdown rule, in effect, despite the fact that it's a championship fight, a new rule recently adopted by the WBA. The mandatory eight count, of course. No standing eight count unless the fighter is helpless on the ropes. No saving by the bell. The ring is a good size ring, 20 feet. But that doesn't really matter here. In fact, it's slightly larger than 20 feet. I paced it off because neither of these men will be using the ring. At least nothing in their history indicates that they would. The bell now for round one, the referee Stanley Christodoulou of South Africa, a veteran who refereed Belinda's fight against Richie Cates in Johannesburg in May of 76. Linda's usually a slow starter. Let's see if he changes this time. He tries to go to the belly. He is a punishing punch. His left hook can be tremendous. First round action. The judges, Waldemar Schmidt of Puerto Rico, Jesus Celi of Venezuela. So the officials should be to Galindez's like it. Christodoulou, for instance, in the Cates bout, gave Galindez a long delay after Cates had butted him savagely in the third round. And Galindez came on to win by a knockout in the 15th. A quick left sharp jab. Rossman's jab stings. It has strength behind it. It is not a little flick. A jab up in the area of the eyes where Rossman will concentrate. First round action, the beginning of things, a minute 45 left. this round. The tin face of young Mike Ross. Your concentration. Melinda, squat, stocky, powerhouse body. End of the round coming up. 
Act live, round two, the bell having just sounded the first round cautious. These two men with too much respect for one another to gamble in the early going, not in the wake of their brawl of last September 15th. But in fairness, Mike Rossman getting the left in occasionally as he did just that. And if the round was to go to anybody and not be called even, it would seem to me it would have gone to Mike Rossman. This second round action. Good right in there by Galindez on the inside. Rossman's fought 43 times, 136, 23 by KOs, lost four, drawn three times. Galindez had 10 successful title defenses before he lost to Rossman, one of the great of recent light heavyweights. Galindez there with the left has been to the well 67 times, 154 with 33 KOs, lost seven, drew four, two no decision. So the nuts and bolts of the contest, all now before you. Round two. Like to alert our stations along the line. At the end of this round, we'll be providing a station break. Crowd yelled more than Rossman's blow was worth. It actually landed on Galindez's right arm. Rossman getting the left in. Up in the eye area, which is what he wants to do. Melendez. Melendez there, going to the belly. Rossman with a good right to the head. But that's what Galindez really figures on doing in this fight. Just giving it to Rossman in the stomach. Wearing him down. Is a tremendous body puncher. better of it with a sharp right that landed. These two men are hitters, aren't they? See Victor going down to the midriff. There can be no question that Galindez is in far better condition for this fight than he was last September. As we're coming closer to the end of round two. Rossman fighting with purpose, knowing his fight plan. We'll return with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after this from our local stations. They've just come out for the start of round three. Personal, subjective scoring. I scored the second round even. Galindez started connecting to the belly. That's what Rossman has to watch out for. Rossman still getting the left in to the face, but no cuts yet on Galindez. Third round action. You can read the respect these men have for each other. Quality fighters, the WBA light heavyweight championship at stake. Galinda's after it. No light heavyweight has ever recaptured a crown. For a long time, the heavyweights had that history. Patterson changed that, and Ali changed it twice. <laughs> Getting the left in. Caution from Christodoulou. Stanley Christodoulou, the referee of South Africa, telling Mike Rossman to get those blows up. In fact, there were two that were low, or at least looked low. Mike with a good quick combination. Shot direct punches. to the head. Out muscle. Marlon. And Galindez gets Rossman against the ropes. Watch his shoulders. Galindez after a right lead left himself open. That's the danger of the right lead. And Rossman was quick with the left and then the right. The left into the face again. Again, third round action. Melinda's got 
cut through with the left. Coming down to the end of round three, the lower right hand corner evidence is that. Nobody has really broken through yet. Punish the other man. you between rounds this time take a gander again at some of the action in the round there's the bell for round three there is Galindez and his corner being worked over now let's look at it you saw that quick combination that I referred to the left and the right but Galindez not connecting with that left that left a little short now the right into the kidneys, that hurts, and then the left caught Rossman, and Galindez had Rossman where he wanted him. But Rossman, away from the ropes, tied him up. As we said again earlier, Victor Galindez, the face of a fighter. Forget the round girl. Quite a record he compiled until Rossman tagged him, wasn't it? And in Galindez's corner, Tito Lecturi, Roberto Galindez, Oscar Rodriguez. In Rossman's corner, Slim Robinson, his trainer, Eddie Aliano, his cut man, and his brother Andy Rossman. The bell now. Round four action begins. A long right that connected after a left lead had connected. Galindez dropped his gloves and backed off for just a second. Somehow he seems startled by the length of that right. Stanley Christodoulo, Republic South Africa, the referee. 16 years he's been a referee. Rossman straight up. Straight ahead. The left, his principal instrument. Set up the right. There, you saw that counter punching right by Rossman. Galindez trying to get inside, and Galindez's head snapped back by that Rossman right. Reach edge with Mike Rossman. Galindez wants to get inside and use that body strength of his. He's the man wanting to leave himself open. Too much respect for the other. See the length of that left. Meanwhile, Galindez's lefts are not quite reaching the opponent. Or if they do, they are picked off in the main. Wild right. He was not staggered by a blow. The crowd misread it. He was off balance. Galindez was. Rossman has Galindez directly above us. And Galindez got in a left to Rossman that stung him. Galindez appearing wild in his movements, but still effective because of his body strength. Got to always be careful with that fighter. Good Galindez left, and another left. Now they're beginning to mix it up. Look at Galindez as Rossman was trying to tie him up. Punching to the kidneys. And they hurt. Take, take that turn on a fighter. Wear him down. Fourth round action, and we're not that far away from the end of the round. again with the right into the midsection. Or the side and the kidney, really. Coming to the end of round four. A tough round, a cut left and a right. A right up the cut hurt Rossman and Galindez is hurting Rossman. And ending to the round, the fighters don't stop fighting. And at the very end of the round, Galindez unquestionably hurt Rossman. First for the left and then a strong Rossman, blaming Mike for the act 
activity that occurred after the bell had rung. Got it in slow motion. Now watch this action. You saw that left. That hurt him another left. Right. Rossman trying to hold on, and there was the uppercut. And Galindez, at the end of the round, had taken command. Now watch what happens. Galindez starts arguing with a fan. That's Andy Rossman, Mike's brother, who came into the ring. So Mike went after Galindez. And now it's round five, and we've got a wild scene and the makings of another brawl. Galindez becomes the aggressor. He is tigerish. A wild left missed. Galindez, oh, that right got in there. Galindez is making the fight and more effectively than he fought at any time last September. Rossman's face is red from the blows he took at the end of the fourth round. Rossman this point in time must be careful he must keep his composure he must forget the altercation with the brother and the crowd is on its feet as Melinda has Rossman again against the ropes with it, others with it. This is coming to you live from the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. And suddenly a turn in the fight in the fourth round as Galindez began to take over. So Galindez with the right lead, it came to the back of the head. Rossman just said to Christodoulou, have him stop it. He was butting, using the head. Sure. Melendez has always done that. The head, the shoulders, the arms, the elbows, everything. This is the fifth round. We almost have a melee here at the end of the fourth. and the makings of a tremendous fight once again. The blood on the brow was above the brow, seemed to be more in the scalp of Victor Galindez. Thus far, no blood where it would hurt him and his fighting ability most, above the eyes. Rossman has not been able to open those cuts up, those old cuts. He did it in the fifth and sixth rounds of their first fight. And after that, was able to dominate. Let's see if there's a repeat. I have given the last two rounds to Victor Galindez, who came on strongly and stung Rossman very, very much in the fourth round, just before that action after the battle. A good left by Galindez. He is now getting that sweeping left hook in there. He's coming over. Rossman's right again. making effective use of that left. A wild right miss. And Rossman grows more cautious. Galindez going down to the belly with the left. The right lead occasionally, and it's been working to a reasonable degree, though once it cost Galindez when Rossman counted very effectively. 
No change in Rossman's style, stance, posture. Straight up, trying to use that left. Ultimately set up the devastating right. But in the meantime, Melendez having the look of a sharp fighter. And once again, a very exceptional fighter. The way it was before last September. Picked off the Lindas' earlier blows. The ultimate right got in. Mike is now feeling the kind of punishment the Lindas can render. Mike got in two quick left jabs. As this fight progresses, if it does, a good right by the Lindas stinging Ross. Then condition becomes a factor, and maybe Rossman's youth will work for him. Maybe. Incidentally, in the interview, Mike said he thought it would. He also said he was going to do more body punching in this fight, but that has not been in evidence. This is the sixth round, and we are approaching the end of it. the end of the round at hand. Seventh round, live, the Superdome, New Orleans, Louisiana. Now becoming a fine, exciting bout. Melendez, in my book, the winner of the last three rounds. Between rounds, they were rubbing down Melendez's left arm, and he was shaking it vigorously. He has been using it frequently and effectively. A sweeping left to sting Mike Ross. Mike Rossman with a good, quick uppercut. Stanley Christodoulou is the third man in the ring. 16 years a referee from South Africa. Saw the right of Galindez and then the left. Mike Rossman at the moment, just at the moment, doesn't seem to have the spark. Could change at any time. A couple of quick, effective blows. Seventh round action. Rossman's face into Galindez's shoulder, which in itself is dangerous. Galindez punching away on the inside, trying to get to the midriff. Galindez, a much more difficult target. There, Rossman's fans encouraged by two quick lefts. See Galindez hold him with the left hand and maul him with the right. This is the way he becomes so effective. When the referee does not interfere. Then with the weight of his body against the opponents. He's going to be worn down in that lead left of Galindez. Stung Rossman again. And he is beating Rossman to the punch. And he is punching more effectively at this moment. And Rossman is trying to cover. And Galindez has him in the opposite corner. And that's when he uses that body screen. And he gets the right in there. And tries to get a right uppercut. Then goes down to the belly with the right and the left. And the right again. And the punches go to the kidneys. Rossman trying to cover. Rossman holding on. Galindez fighting Victor Galindez's fight as we approach the end of the seventh round. Well for round eight, live at the Superdome in New Orleans. It's been a tremendous fight. Just before the last round ended, what seemed to me to be a Rossman butt over Galindez's right eye opened a gash. It's been closed. 
That's the kind of thing we'll have to watch for as this fight gets down to its waning stage. Rossman's corner. He appeared tired, a bit discouraged, but was being enormously encouraged, as would be expected, by his handlers. Eighth round. Lindez, when he's right, a difficult dog. Those punches come from all over. Rossman started well enough in my book, winning the first and third rounds with the second round people. After that, it seems to me, Galindez has taken over the fight. Might getting in a couple of lefts. Now Mike begins to score using his left more effectively in this round and then the right in combination. Banking left by Melendez. If there's fatigue showing in either fighter, in this, the eighth round, it seems to me to be in Rossman, yet blood is now coming out of Galindez's mouth. Remember, Rossman is eight years younger than Victor. Good left by Rossman. Good right by Galindez, and Rossman holds on. The right lead, even being used now by Galindez, and with perhaps increasing effectiveness. Maybe that fight Galindez had in Argentina after the cancellation again Galindez scoring helped him a great deal. That's what he said in our interview through his interpreter. Round, the end of round eight coming up. Again Galindez scoring. Round nine. This crowd wildly excited over this fight and every reason to be. It started cautiously, but from the third round on, it's been steady, steady, steady fighting. And steady, steady, steady movement by Victor Galindez with his back now Georgia. He began to take control of this fight as I see it in the fourth round. He's thrown punches from all over. The right lead has scored effectively. A sweeping left has stung Rossman. At the end of the fourth round, Rossman seemed a genuinely hurt. Then fisticuffs after the round, involving Victor Galindez and Mike's kid brother, and Rossman's going to come on. Now's the time to start doing it. Fight is broken by Krista Dulu, the referee. Most notably, Mike has not been able to cut open Belinda's eyes, his most susceptible area. Good right by Rossman, and then a good left by Galinda. And a good right again by Galinda. That right getting in there now, more and more. Galindez providing a difficult target. Look at that wrong sweeping left, and Galindez right after him. Tigerish, as I said, spinning Rossman against the ropes. Galindez now fighting exactly the way he wants to fight. Rossman covering and not fighting back effectively. If events permit at the end of this round, let me alert our stations, there'll be a station break. If events permit. But with the action going this way, you can't tell. Saw that left of Galindez. And what a difficult target Galindez is. He wraps himself up. The head is kept low. He can bob and weave. He moves those shoulders. And out of all of that morass comes a right like that. He punches from everywhere. Stunning performance by the veteran. Thus far. See Mike covering. The measure here is the number of blows being thrown by Galindez. 
Hoffman is covering. He is the defender. Well returned with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after this from our local stations. despite the eight years of age. Look at Mike Rossman right there. And you can see the chagrin written all over the lad's face. A fine young man, and it is the right hand. And they are feeling the upper part of it, above the knuckles. And that's obviously where the break took place. We will try to talk to Mike to find out and certainly we want to talk to the again light heavyweight champion of the world now let's look at the end of the last round let's see if we can detect anything the left connected there was the right he threw that connected and then he fell forward and it may have happened right there so difficult to judge but in any event we've shown you the pictures at the end of the round and when Mike came back, he was the picture of chagrin. As for Galindez, astride the shoulders of his fellow countrymen, he can now go back to Argentina, and maybe he will probably be hoping they will say, yes, you are a great champion. You are of the cut of Carlos Manzo. The ice pack already on Mike Rossman's right hand. And Mike, the head bow. Here is the announcement. being interviewed he does the not speak english of course by technical knockout in the 10th round so they call it the 10th round because rossman Diego, could not come out champion of the world victor Galindez. The, victor Galindez. the official announcement that galindez has won it now let's get victor down here if we possibly can Rather than start trying to deal with Alberto Oliva, Galindez's interpreter, let's try and get Mike down here. His father is above him. Michael. Let's see if we can get up to Mike. Don't want to bother him in the wake of the way he must feel, and yet we will try to get an explanation. Right, we're getting up now to the ring apron to talk to Mike Ross. Mike, first of all, we're terribly sorry, of course. And secondly, when did the break to the hand occur? I'm not sure. Uh, sixth, seventh round. I think I hit him on top of the head with a right hand, man. And uh, that's how I started to feel a little throb. And then I hit him with another right hand down below. And uh, that's when I felt everything, man. He told me he couldn't throw it after the, the sixth round. He wasn't able to throw the right hand. I told him, I said, uh, uh, try to use your left, left jab. Well, in the last punch of the eighth round, which we just showed, we did see you throw a right, but then it seemed to us, and it's so hard to tell, you're in apparent pain. They're not landing, and it did hurt, so uh, I was just trying to land it, you know, uh, just in case it, may, it might land, maybe take him out, you know, uh, take the chance with the pain, but uh, it, it was getting unbearable. 
in fairness to Galindez, he fought a much superior fight to the last time. He, oh. he fought his kind of fight. Oh, no doubt about it. He didn't fight his kind of fight. You know, I kept him in the center of the ring. Uh, I, I pressed the fight more, a little more than he did. He just uh, taking these wild shots at me. And uh, like I say, if you can't, it's, it's tough to fight with one hand. Okay, now what happened after the fourth round when your brother was out there fighting well, with Victor? Well, the, the bell had rung and uh, he just kept punching. So uh, my brother ran out there and, uh, then you know, uh, then he started punching him. I went after him and them guys came in and, uh, you know, he's just trying to hit me after the bell. He couldn't, he, up to then, he couldn't hit me with a real good shot. All right, what happens now in your mind after this defeat? Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I lost uh, to a real good fighter. I was champion and uh, I'll wait till this hand heals. I've been having trouble with it for like the last two or three years and uh, I'll wait to it heals and uh, just go right back to the drawing board. I'm gonna, I'll be 23 we'll be and I'll, I'll be there again, man. This is your dad. What, it was, what was it you said, sir? We'll be back on top again. Well, good luck to you both. We'll be back. Certainly, let's take that easy on that hand. Certainly, you lost to a great fighter. Oh, I no must say that. No doubt about it. <laughs> take care, Mike. All right, that's the scene here. Uh, talk with Mike Rossman, and then we'll be talking through his interpreter with Victor Galindez. We'll be back in just... Okay, Alberto Oliva to my right. Victor Galindez, again the champion to my left. Now, first question, Alberto. When did Victor feel he took control of the fight? ¿Cuándo te diste cuenta que tomaste control de la pelea? En todo momento, porque yo estaba muy bien entrenado, gracias al eh, señor Juan Carlos de Ture, que me ha mi, mi apoderado y mi malla, así que date cuenta, hicimos las cosas como él decía en el gimnasio y hemos cuidado como te tengo donde partir. He says that he knew that he was uh, making it in the fight from the very beginning at every moment, no doubt about it. He was very well trained and very well uh, supported by his manager. Now, what was your reaction when Mike's brother, Andrew, came out after the fourth round. ¿Cuál fue tu reacción cuando Andrew entró al ring? ¿Qué pasó ahí? Fue un sinvergüenza porque me estaba molestando toda la pelea, golpe bajo, incluso una cabeza tremenda que me partió la cabeza arriba. He says that he was, uh, uh, Mike was uh, punching him in the low section. Como no me podía pegar en la cara, me pegaba en cualquier lado. That he, as he couldn't uh, 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 punch him in the, no, in the nose and in the face, he punched him in the, in the uh, below zone. No, no. Did he notice, Alberto, at any time, a loss of power in Mike Rossman's right hand? ¿Notaste en algún momento una pérdida de poder en la mano derecha de Rossman? Bueno, porque no sentí, no sé, porque cuando la sacaba no la sentía ni me pegaba tampoco. He says that he didn't feel that uh, Rossman had any power in his uh, right hand at all. Throughout no, no the fight. Power. En toda la pelea pasó eso, no, no, no sé, tenía fuerza. No Rossman. sé, porque yo estaba muy fuerte y no sentía las manos de él. He was he never he, hurt. He, that's right, no, never. Never hurt. Finally, what does he see now? What does he plan for his next fight? He says that he prefers that Tito thinks about that. Does he feel that now the, his fellow countrymen will give him what he thinks is his due because they haven't in the past? He says that uh, he, he's very proud of taking the crown back to Argentina, and he says that uh, in this shape, Rosman could never have beaten him. All right. Now, final question. Ask Tito Lecturi. What are his plans for Victor's next fight? Tito, ¿cuáles son tus planes para...? 20 para días de descanso y volver al gimnasio y después de tratar con, con la televisión para la misma defensa. He says uh, he's going to take 20 days off and then go back immediately to the gym and then rethink uh, his strategy again. Okay. Thank